Here in Camera Basics, we're going to take care of some very simple things, yes, but we're also going to be taking care of some very important things. I want to talk for just a quick minute about mirrorless cameras, the sensor size in here, then we're going to look at the primary controls of these cameras, and we're going to get our file format set correctly right from the get-go. All right, this is a mirrorless camera. We have interchangeable lenses, lots of high-quality options from Nikon available here. In each of the lenses is an aperture unit that is our first way of controlling the amount of light coming into the camera. And so this is an option that not only controls the amount of light, but also your depth of field. It works along these f-stop numbers, and you can either open up or stop down your lens through various settings. Now, as I said, this also controls your depth of field. So if you have a lens that goes down to 1.4, you're going to have very shallow depth of field, like these red lines indicate the front and the back edge of the focus. Now, as we stop our aperture down, you're going to get more and more depth of field. From one setting to the next, it's not that big of a difference, but by the time you get to the other end of the spectrum, it can be a huge difference so that you are getting much greater depth of field. Now, as light continues its path inward, it is trying to get to the image sensor, and the shutter unit is the next obstacle it needs to get past. Now, with the mirrorless camera, the shutter needs to remain in the open position so that you can see what's going on through the LCD on the back of the camera or through the viewfinder so that you can easily see it with your eye under bright light situations. Now, when it comes time to shoot a photo, there's a lot of movements that need to happen to make sure everything is done right. First, what happens is the first shutter unit on the bottom closes. That enables the sensor to prepare for the exposure. And then the second unit closes down and then opens again so that you can see either on the back or through the viewfinder of the camera what's going on. And that happens each time you press the shutter. Now, as a little side note here, there are some different options with the shutter unit, and we'll talk about that in the drive section. Now, the shutter speeds are a great way of controlling light as well. There's a lot of different options, and they're also good for either stopping or showing motion for subjects that are moving. So, wide variety of shutter speeds to make use of. So, these are your basics of the mirrorless camera. One of the most important, and probably the most important element within a camera these days, is the image sensor. And there's a lot of aspects to the image sensor. And what I wanted to look at here was the size of the sensor. There's lots of different sizes of sensor. And the one in the Z7 II and the Z6 II is the same size as was in 35 millimeter film. Now, there's nothing perfect about 35 millimeter film or magical. It just happened to be a convenient size that was right size of film to get enlargements and small enough to have small cameras. And so it's become very popular with a wide range of photographers. It's what's called a full frame sensor in today's terms. And there are smaller size sensors out there, some made by Nikon and some made by other manufacturers, and they can all be good cameras. But this does use one of the larger common sizes available on the market today. Now, let's talk about the primary controls on this camera. Obviously, turning the camera on and off is your first step in operation. And one of the things that it does is it has a low pass filter that vibrates to remove dust off the sensor. Dust on the sensor will manifest itself as black spots, notably in highlight areas like clouds or skies and so forth. And it's something that you really want to try to avoid and you want to be careful changing lenses not to allow dust in on the sensor. If some does get in there, this will remove some of it. Now, you may need to physically remove it in another way if it kind of does not work uh, its job, and I will talk about that a little bit later on in the class. The shutter release for shooting photos is something you'll be using quite a bit, I am sure. The main command dial on Nikon cameras has been that dial on the back top of the camera, something you'd typically access with your thumb. Now, the sub-command dial is on the front of the camera, and that's usually a secondary control. And so we'll use a combination of these two dials for changing shutter speeds, apertures, navigating the menu system, and a variety of other needs. On the back of the camera, we have our switch for going from photo to video mode. The camera works very differently when you're in these two different modes. Most of this class will be in the photo mode. Now, we do have a video section and there's a video menu in there, so that might be good times to be in the video or movie mode of the camera. 
The multi-selector on the back of the camera is your way of navigating throughout the menu system. You can use it for moving your focusing points, and so when you need to go up, down, left, and right, it's the multi-selector. If I forget the name in the heat of the moment of the class, I might just call it the up-down selector on the back of the camera. So we'll try to remember multi-selector. In the middle of that is the OK button. This is where you can confirm settings. You might be changing something and you want to lock that feature in. You're going to hit the OK button. The sub-selector, which I will probably be calling the joystick, is a great way for navigating the menu system, but its primary purpose is for moving the focusing point around. But the thing is, is that you'll be able to use it for a variety of purposes. Now, the camera also has a touch screen that you can use for shooting, going through the menu, and a variety of purposes. And so it's an option you can use if you don't like using a touch screen. Well, there's dedicated buttons that you can use and not use the touch screen at all if you don't want to. All right, now there's something a little unusual about Nikon buttons if you're new to Nikon, and that is some of their buttons are a press and hold while you turn the dial. Uh, so you don't just press the button and release it, you press and hold that button in while you're turning the dial to adjust that particular setting, which is kind of a nice uh, security system. It, you can't just press a button and have something change on you. You gotta do two things to make sure that you really want that change. Now, if you don't like the way that operates, well, you can go into the custom setting menu under controls and you can change the F6 setting on this so that they work in a different manner. I'll talk more about this as we get into those custom settings, but if you don't like the way something works on this camera, don't just complain. See if there's a way that you can change it because there's a lot of options like that on this camera. Now, with the shutter release, it is like most all cameras when you press halfway down, it activates the metering system and the autofocus system. Now, it also wakes the camera up if it happens to be asleep, which it tends to do quite a bit in order to conserve battery power. And if you're ever lost in the menu system and you're not really sure which button or arrow to get out of there, you can always press lightly on the shutter release because that will immediately kick you into the shooting mode. The camera always wants to be ready to shoot photos. And then, of course, pressing down all the way to take the photo. Now, if you don't like this autofocus being attached to the shutter release, you can deactivate it, which is basically putting your camera in what is commonly known as back button autofocus. And so if you prefer back button autofocus, you can go into custom setting menu A, A6, and turn off the AF activation associated with the shutter release on the camera. I like back button focus. It's something that uh, I didn't like at first, but I kind of just gave it some time to see if I would like it. And after, I don't know, a couple hundred photos, maybe it was a thousand photos, I started to like it quite a bit more. It gave me a little bit more control. So we'll talk more about that in the focusing section. One of the most important settings you can make on a modern camera is with the file format. And so this is how it is recording information to the memory card on the camera. The basic options are RAW and JPEG. The RAW information is the original information off the sensor that has very little interpretation or compression going on. The camera is just recording basically everything that it sees. Now, the disadvantage is that it's a proprietary format. It's not something that's going to be real common to find and something that you can easily open with certain types of software, but all the right types of photography software these days will be able to read a Nikon RAW format. It is larger in file size, so you're gonna get less images on memory cards, but memory cards are relatively affordable and you can get a lot of images on a card. Now, JPEG is one of the most popular formats for files anywhere, <laughs> at any time. They're passed around all the time, very common, very easy to deal with, smaller in size, but they have compression done on them, which means some of the information that is captured at the time that you took the photo is then thrown away and you'll never get it back. And so uh, shoot JPEGs when it's appropriate for the situation. If you wanna keep the most amount of information, you wanna shoot with RAW. Now, when you dive into the photo shooting menu and you go to the image quality setting, you're gonna see a lot of different options. Let's go through what some of those options are doing. All right, first up, let's talk about the Z7 II because it is slightly different between the six and the seven here. 
So here we have a 45 megapixel sensor, uh, which means your resolution is 8256 by 5504. Gonna give you a file size of anywhere from 39 to 88. And we're gonna talk about that range when we get into the menu system. There's some options on how the raw file is recorded. But for now, we're just gonna kind of leave it right there. And so this is what I would recommend for most people with the Z7 II. If you're looking to get the most highest quality information out of the camera, you wanna be shooting raw and then using it with the appropriate software. Now, there's a whole bunch of JPEG settings. There's actually three basic versions, fine, normal, and basic. And this is dealing with different compression sizes. And each of these has subcategories of them. So there's actually six versions of JPEGs that you can get with different file sizes. They are all the same resolution, the 8256 by 5504. It's just how much information do you want Nikon to get rid of and how small or how large a file size would you like? If I was shooting a lot of sports photos, I might consider shooting one of the fine quality JPEG settings so that I could store more information on memory cards. Um, if the JPEGs fit my quality needs, it would be much easier to download and process those images than raw images. For the more discrete shooter, you would definitely want to shoot with raw. Now it is possible to shoot raw and JPEG at exactly the same time, and that can fit some people's needs. If you have a raw image and you have time, you can create JPEG images of any level, of any quality that you want later on. And so in most cases, I don't recommend raw plus JPEG or except for situations where you know you need a RAW and you need a JPEG and you don't want to take the time to download your RAWs, make JPEGs all of them, export the JPEGs. If one person needs RAWs and somebody else needs JPEGs right away after a shoot, that's a good time to shoot both at the same time. And if you do shoot both, of course your file sizes are going to be a little bit larger. Now, for the Z6 II, it's all the same except for the megapixels and the resolution and the file sizes are going to be a little bit different. And so the same information applies to both of these cameras. I encourage you to shoot in RAW if you are trying to get the greatest amount of information. It's gonna be most helpful with high dynamic range. And so when you're trying to capture dark shadowed areas and bright highlights, the RAW is gonna collect a lot of very good information there. For color correcting, white balance situations, RAW is also king. Uh, but if you are gonna be shooting lots of photos and the JPEGs do fit your needs, they can potentially save you space and time when used appropriately. So let's go ahead and take a look on the camera and kind of walk through some of these different settings on the camera. So we're gonna hit the menu button here and we need to tab our way up to the camera. And what we are looking for is image quality, which is right down here. Now this is one of the strangest things I have found on any of the cameras in the industry is Nikon's default setting out of the box is for a normal JPEG. I don't know why they do that. That's a fairly low setting in here. So the lowest, smallest file would be JPEG basic, and then the star ratings are a little bit higher quality than the basic ones. So that's kind of down at the bottom, and then we work our way up towards the top. We have raw here, so that's gonna be your highest quality setting. If you wanna shoot raw plus JPEG, all the RAWs up here are going to be exactly the same, but you get different JPEG file sizes. They're all the full resolution, but they're compressed to a different degree. Now, I like to shoot RAW most all the time. That's kind of the default setting. Unless I know I need something smaller, uh, then I might do that. So I'm going to go ahead and set RAW for now. And it is set right there where we can see it. So if you got your camera set, great, because that was the first most important setting to make in the camera. All right, folks, those were some camera basics, and it's now time to get into the good stuff. We're gonna be going through exposure, focus, and the drive settings, and those are probably the three most important sections in this class. So take a little break and get onto that next video, and we'll see you there.